So before we begin, I want to frame this whole conversation by saying that this is absolutely nothing new. Back in the day, before ChatGPT, before GPT-4, when it was all just GPT-3, uh, there were times when OpenAI would release an updated model um, or a patch or something, and it would completely break all of our prompts. Um, this was in the early days of the Instruct series models. Um, so for those that are like super like not OG, the original unfiltered models were basically just autocomplete engines. So if you used raw GPT-3, you'd like type in a you know thing and it would just continue the sentence. It wouldn't respond to you. It would just kind of confabulate a bunch of stuff. Kind of like if you pick up your phone and you know you hit, you know, type like I am and then you choose the next like autocomplete thing and it's just kind of almost word salad. That's about what original GPT-3 was like. Then we had the instruct series, then we had the text series and so on and so forth. So those are all different ways of training and aligning models. Now, what was frustrating back in the day was that sometimes they would change the entire scheme around how those models were prompting. And particularly those uh, of us, either myself or people that I was consulting for, uh, OpenAI would le release a new model and it would completely break all of your prompts. Now that they have settled on the chatbot model or the assistant model, the API has become a little bit more standard, but even still, you'll notice that every now and then when they make a change on the back end, so there's hidden system prompts, there's also underlying models, they'll either update the model to be more safe or they'll add new filters or they'll change the hidden system prompts. All kinds of things happen that make these, that change the behaviors of these chatbots. So there's the underlying intelligence of the model and so on and so forth. Now, Claude by Anthropic has been uh, in my opinion, and the opinion of many others, obviously it's not universal, but in the opinion of many people, myself included, Claude has been much more intelligent than GPT-4. However, this morning I was disappointed to jump onto Anthropic's Claude um, and try and continue some of the conversations that I was having, and it was just asking generic boilerplate questions and kind of just, it, it really felt like it was a major step back, like a full generation or more less intelligent. Now, this is not the first time that this has happened. Um, you know, when when ChatGPT launched and there was, you know, 3.5 Turbo versus 4, uh, 3.5 Turbo was definitely a step up because it was so much faster and it was just, it was almost as smart as ChatGPT 4. And then, of course, 4 got progressively slightly smarter and then they came out with 4.0. And at first, you know, you might remember some of my videos. I was very excited about 4.0 because it was adding more multimodal features, but it's also substantially dumber. And lots of people have said that ChatGPT4 still hands down smarter than 4.0. And so then I just saw on Twitter, OpenAI announces they're having a 4.0 mini. And so here's my read of what's going on because um, certainly back in the days of early GPT4, GPT3, when you know token costs were measured you know, per thousand tokens, now they're measured per, per million tokens. The downward pressure, the competitive pressure between you know all these different AI companies is basically saying, hey, whoever can offer a good enough chatbot, and we'll remember that, good enough um, for cheaper and faster, is that's who's going to win the market. And so uh, you might also remember, if you've been on my channel for a long time, when I was talking about terminal race condition, and I promise this is all related, um, I'll tie it all back together. So... One of the things that I was afraid of is that market competition would force AI companies to sacrifice intelligence for the sake of speed and cost effectiveness, and that is exactly what we are seeing. These models are getting progressively more stupid because you only have to get to the, th the threshold of good enough so they're looking for product market fit, which is like, how, how can you provide the best good enough product for cheap enough that will just edge out the competition? Now, for what most people need these chatbots for, something that is only uh, you know performing at the 70th or 80th percentile will be more than good enough for you know product market fit, and it's also going to be 50% cheaper or 60% cheaper or even 10 times cheaper than the than the frontier model with maximum intelligence. So now, obviously, what's available behind closed doors to you know uh, enterprise customers that are shelling out millions of dollars a year. They probably still get unfiltered access to, you know, raw GPT-4, to raw GP, uh, Claude 3.5, and so on and so forth. But those of us out in the public consumer space, we're just getting a model that is continuously getting hamstrung 
because they're optimizing for cost efficiency, which to be fair, this was always going to be part of the plan because if you watch very closely, these models are not cost efficient to run. But, you know, the smaller models that are good enough, uh, you know, like Gemini Flash to do some things. If you watch the interview that I had with Chad about using uh, Gemini Flash to read uh, 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 voicemail transcripts, you, you, you have this whole trend that's happening. And also to take a step back, I'm not saying that this is permanent. I'm not saying that we're going to forever have dumber and dumber chatbots because once eventually economies of scale are going to get to the point where it's like, kind of like how your consumer grade laptop or desktop, once you get to 32 gigabytes of RAM or 64 gigabytes of RAM, 99% of people don't need any more than that. And so what I'm hoping is that, you know, that with one or two more generations of these models, as we get better at making them smaller, faster and efficient and therefore cheaper, um, we can also maintain that level of intelligence. But right now we're still at the very early adoption curve uh, of these models. And before I go too much further, I want to uh, direct your attention to my Substack, And this will be 20 seconds, but I have a free Substack, um, and I write long form stuff there all the time. It's just daveshap.substack.com. Um, you get deeper dives into AI safety, stuff going on at OpenAI, that sort of stuff. Completely free. You can pledge if you want. Um, I know that some of you do want to support me, but you don't like Patreon or you don't like YouTube. Um, Substack uh, integrates with Stripe. So anyways, back to the show. I just wanted to share that I am on Substack and you can get much, much deeper dives and longer takes. So anyways, so I ran this poll because this is, this is the event that catalyzed everything. You see, I, I ran this poll just four hours before recording this. Because it was like, Claude was insufferably useless this morning. Like, I had my Fitbit on. It's charging now, but I had my Fitbit on. And, like, from the time that I woke up, my heart rate was 52. And by the time I stopped using Claude, it was 107 because it was so aggravatingly stupid. It was like going all the way back to, like, GPT 3.5. And it was just like, there was such a disconnect between how it performed yesterday and how it's performing today. Now, what I suspect happened is that because like the timing is very conspicuous, uh, Anthropic just released their Android uh, version of, of, of Claude. Now, a lot of people were apparently using an, uh, a bootleg version, um, but the official Android app for Claude has, was released yesterday or maybe the day before. Um, anyways, within the last 24 to 48 hours. And so they're seeing usage skyrocket. Well, their servers probably can't keep up, and so, you know, what do you do if there's, if you can go to chat GPT, Gemini, Claude, you know, Pi, whatever, there's, you know, take your pick of chatbots today, Poe, um, there's all kinds of chatbots. So what do you do? You compromise the quality so that the power users like me and some of the other people that are commenting, like some of the developers, so the power users complain, but if the vast majority of your users don't notice, because you see like 28% said they didn't notice, 15% said it was dumber, only 1% said it was, you know, smarter, if anything. But 56% of my audience doesn't use Claude. So it's like, and when you look at the some of the graphs, and I, I don't know if the data is out there, but ChatGPT is still by far the world leader in terms of, you know, bulk number of visits and user users. So Anthropic is trying to carve out a larger space. So it's like, hey, we need to launch, and we need to launch fast, and we need to also make sure that it's usable. So I suspect that they've done something on the back end to maybe run it in a lower power mode. Um, I, I, I think that there's been some rumors about how some of these models, like you can, you can kind of tune them on the back end without swapping out the entire model in terms of basically you know, telling it how smart to be uh, versus how much power to use or how much time to take. It's purely speculative on my part. And I'm, of course, looking at it from the perspective of an infrastructure engineer where you can absolutely turn tune CPUs and servers and GPUs to say like, hey, you're running in low power mode. So, you know, cap your power use at 50 percent, something like that. Um, I would be shocked if, you know, these enterprise grade GPUs and other models don't have the same option because, again, it's all about product market fit at this point. Now, my fear, though, is that if this trend continues, this is where, where I'll tie it back to terminal race condition. So real TLDR of terminal race condition is that competition between corporations and competition between nations basically locks us into a mutually assured destruction uh, scenario where people keep escalating um, how much AI they're using, how fast they're trying to go. 
um, and how much they're trying to deploy AI and how much they're trying to weaponize AI. And basically you kind of get locked into a race condition where the first one to blink, you're basically playing a global game of chicken. The first one to blink loses. Now, if it's a corporation and you lose, that just means that you go out of business because your business model gets, you know, your, your, all of your revenue gets stolen by another company. But on the geopolitical stage, the first one to blink basically loses, um, forever because you, can't keep up once someone gets ahead of you on artificial intelligence. Now, of course, that's purely speculative. It's looking at it from a game theory perspective. Um, but I, the reason that I'm making this is just because what you're seeing, and some, some of the commenters here had great terms for it. I think someone said that they called it like model deflation um, or, or model. Uh, here it was, uh, LLM depreciation. Fantastic term. So thank Luke's Jukes for that term. I love this term, LLM depreciation. Um, someone else was saying like, um, what was it? Release nerf paywall. And I'm like, that's kind of what it feels like. Um, now to be fair, this is not a new phenomenon in the tech space. You release something, you give it away for free for the first, you know, one to six months, you build up a user base and then you lock it behind a paywall, or then you create a tiered, uh, payment structure. All of this is very well established. It just feels really gross and scary when it's artificial intelligence, because it's like, okay, if they're incentivized to keep compromising the intelligence of their models, like it's like, Hey, it's going to be like I've said on Twitter, read cheaper, dumber, faster, right? It, all it has to do is reach the threshold of good enough to satisfy most of your users and keep the subscriber base going and just barely edge out the competition. And that's what we're aiming for. Now in the long run, I think that if we, the consumers demand smarter models, you know, vote with your feet, vote with your dollars. You say, Hey, I canceled my chat GPT subscription because it was too dumb. I literally can't use chat GPT anymore. And as of today, I can hardly use Claude because I'm a power user. So my appeal is if Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, Anthropic, Amazon, whoever's watching this meta, like I am willing to pay more to have unfiltered access to the top tier models. If it's $40 a month, I don't care. I want the, the smartest model. And I will pay to get access to the smartest model. Um, so I, I hope that by creating a different incentive structure in the market, by just opening the door so that us consumer grade people, you know, I don't have an enterprise account. I'm not with an enterprise and I'm not going to be with an enterprise and I'm not going to write a $5 million check to any of these companies, but I'm still willing to pay 40 to $50 a month for access to the top tier model. Um, because for me, speed is not nearly as important as intelligence. Um, and I, if, if it costs more, don't care. I want the top, the, you know, the best of the best at all times. Why? Because that's like, I'm, I'm an edge case user. I'm a power user, whatever you want to call it. Um, but at the same time, by locking the best behind the walls and giving it on, giving privileged access only to certain insiders, I just, that, that, that just feels like some really perverse incentives out there that, um, could possibly lead to or exacerbate this terminal race condition. Now, again, I also want to take a big step back and not be so hyperbolic as to say that what me as a consumer is able to get access to is in no way representative of what is actually going to be happening one behind closed doors and how it's going to play out on the, in the long term and the grand scheme of things. Because also, you know, as many of you have pointed out is that the smarter a model is, on, often the more efficient its world model is. And even when you distill that smarter model, it's still going to outperform the other ones. So there is still some fundamental benefits of having smarter, better base models, even if you then have to hamstring them for market purposes. So basically I'm just griping because they made my model dumb and it really sucked and was aggravating. Um, and reading into it, if that kind of thing keeps up, because here's where I was talking about with terminal race condition, is particularly on the battlefield. Speed is often the most important factor. It's about reaction time. It's about faster decisions. The OODA loop, which is what is it? Observe, orient, decide, act. So the OODA loop is basically um, how uh, combat is conducted. Um, and the, the smaller and faster model that you have that can, that can accelerate the OODA loop by 50%, 5%, and you know whoever takes the shot first and wins, that's all you're aiming for is you don't want something that's going to have to have a whole philosophical debate before pulling the trigger. You want something that pulls the trigger and never asks questions um, when it comes down to it. 
You want that lightning fast reaction speed. And oh, by the way, we don't just see that, that optimizing for speed in the military. You also see optimizing for speed in the finance industry, particularly stock trading, where time is, you know, speed is of the essence. And so this is just, I just really want to point out that this is one of my biggest concerns out there is if we keep sacrificing intelligence just for the sake of speed and cost, you're going to end up with really dumb models that have bad judgment. Um, but again, there's not much you can do about this because that's what the, comp the competition is doing as well. It's, it's saying, hey, can we offer a good enough model for 50% less than 50% faster? As long as it's just past that threshold of just barely good enough, even if it's really dumb and has really bad judgment, as long as it's good enough to, to fool most people or convince most consumers in the marketplace, then it'll still pass muster. So, all right, I've said what I've got to say. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, you know, let me know if I'm overreacting, but I've been talking about this for almost two years now, terminal race condition. And, and this is, I'm kind of seeing it happen. And now that it's happened, not just at open AI, but also at Anthropic where it's like, well, when push comes to shove, we have to make the model stupid just so that we can serve all the customers out there. It's kind of, kind of unnerving. And I'm hoping that it won't be that long, maybe a year or two before the competition in the marketplace forces the models to get smarter, the consumer grade models to get smarter. Um, now, of course, once GPT-5 hits, once Claude 4 hits, we'll see what happens because um, each of those successive generations is an order of magnitude more, more intelligent. So it could be that I'll look back on this video in a year and be like, what was I complaining about? I just had to wait six months and that's my own mantra. So anyways, I'm rambling now. Thanks for watching. Cheers.